are watching Darasa Online. Welcome once again to Darasa Online. My name is Victor Francis, your accountant's teacher. We are still continuing with the revision program. And the last topic to be revised was a topic known as branch accounting. And basically today, we are going to introduce another topic. And the topic that you like it most, and this is company accounting. So with the company accounts, we are going to review various areas. We are not, or we are not going to cover each and everything in company accounts, but we are going to highlight the most important parts. This is more uh, the, the longest topic covered in your syllabus, but we are going to do whatever we can, at least to touch the most important areas. So the number that is displayed Use the same number to give comments, to ask you questions. And uh, remember to do all those questions that uh, we are posting after each lesson. And of course, you will find this also in the website, Continue Revising. So let us start our today's lesson. As I said, we are in company accounts. So in company accounts, we have a number of key issues, the objectives that you need to cover. And I expect you that when you cover this topic, as you are doing revision, or if you have covered, make sure that these objectives or key competencies you have, you have them. So you are expected to be able to examine the meaning and different types of companies. You required also to be able to describe the procedures of raising capital of a limited company. You are required also to be able to explain the meaning of shares, tapes, and the steps used to issue shares. You are also required to be able to determine the terms of issues of shares. And also, you will be required to be able to elaborate on the concept of oversubscriptions and under subscriptions of or for issue for issued shares. You need to be able to determine various terms of payments for the issued shares, how these issued shares are being paid, and then you'll be able to prepare accounting entries for the shares issued. You need also to be able to determine the amount of shares failed to be paid on different stages of payment, that is uh, accrued payment. But again, there, there will be also the concept of uh, payment in advance. Of course, you know them and you are going to do it as we are doing also revision. You need also to be able to prepare various entries for cancellation of share capital and calls in areas for the shares to be forfeited. This will be the concept of forfeiture. Uh, you need also to be able to prepare various entries for share reissued in full and in party reissues. So when uh, shares are forfeited, of course, finally they may be reissued. And when they are reissued, they may be reissued either in full or issue. So this also you are going to make sure that you cover. And of course this uh, is one of the technical party. You need also to be able to explain the meaning and conditions for redemption of preference shares. When we redeem the, uh, the preference share, what, will, what are the conditions? So we are going to see them. Uh, you need also to be able to prepare accounting entries for redemption of preference shares. You need also to be able to describe the meaning and types of debentures. This will be in the part of debentures. And to determine the relevant terms of redemption of debentures. Uh, finally, you need to be able to discuss methods used to redeem debentures and be able to prepare accounting entries for the venture redemption using various methods of redemption and uh, to prepare final accounts. And this is financial statements of a limited 
companies. These are the 17 objectives or competencies that you need to acquire as you are doing this topic. Then, as I've said that we are not going to cover each and everything, let us now highlight uh, the coverage of this topic under this revision. So the revision coverage will be on five areas. That will be the part of raising of share capital of a limited company, and of course, and accounting entries for the issued shares. This we are going to cover in the today's lesson. So the next lessons, we will have accounting entries for forfeiture and the reissue, uh, reissue of shares. We have another lessons for redemption of whom? preference shares. And also we have lessons on redemption of whom? debentures. These are the parts that we are going to cover under this program. Well, uh, what do we mean by the term limited company? So far, this is the definition given by the law. So the law defines company as a fictitious but a legal person. So this is a legal person created by the law and that have the right to own properties, enter into contracts, uh, show other people and be sued, and of course carry any activities for which it is or it was created. We have two main types of companies and that is private companies and public companies. So, and you have covered this in commerce. So, but basically, let us go now to our main part for today, raising of share capital. How the share, I mean the limited company, raises share capital. Of course, in the private companies, once they are registered and given a certificate of incorporation, because they, they, hold, they, they, they own their own capital, so they start or they commence business. But for a limited public company, which goes to the public uh, through issuing prospectors, then after being issued a certificate of incorporation, they have to raise share capital from the public. And after reaching the minimum required capital, then uh, from the public after issuing the prospectors, then they go back to the registrar of the company and being issued another certificate, that is certificate of trade. That's where now they start trading. So for a limited public company that issues shares to the public, they raise shares through the issue of prospectors. So this is an invitation, as I've said, to the general public to subscribe for the, uh, for the shares. And this, uh, normally, when the prospectors is issued, so those eligible candidates or eligible applicants will apply and the money on application are deposited in a scheduled bank account by the interested parties and a public limited company can issue its equity as well as reference shares and even the debentures. So these are the capital, I mean that these are the shares that they can issue and debenture of course it is a loan. So because we are dealing with public limited companies and they can even issue ordinary shares, they can even issue preference shares and debentures. So the accounting treatments for the issue of both ordinary share and preference share as well as debenture are normally are the same or similar. So the public limited company will raise shares through each of prospectors to the uh, public, inviting them to subscribe for the shares issued. Then, when now these shares are issued to the public, well, so they may be issued in different way in terms of payment as well as the price. When issued shares are issued to the public, so then the term of issue 
may be expressed as under at a par, at a premium, or at a discount. What do we mean when we say that this share, uh, these shares are issued at par? So the shares will be termed as issued at par when the amount payable on the shares are equal to its nominal value of that share. So if you issue these shares at a price equal to its nominal value, we say that this share is issued at a par, at a premium, if the amount payable by the, subscri the, the, the subscribers is more than the nominal value, we term these shares as issued at a premium. What about at a discount? So the share will be termed as issued at a discount if the amount payable on these shares are less or is, the amount is less than the nominal value of the share. So this will be a discount. So these are the terms under which shares can be issued. What about the mode of payment? Normally, the shares issued uh, at the Dar es Salaam Stock of Exchange, DSE, are normally paid under lump sum. So terms of payment, as regards to terms of payment, share may be issued and payable at lump sum when the whole amount are paid on application, or that means shares issued are uh, subscribed and paid fully on application. The other uh, term of payment is on installments. And basically, uh, normally this is when the payment are made under installment. That means the share issued are subscribed, but payment are made on installment basis. And normally we have application installment, allotment installment, and then it will be followed by calls. It may be first call, second call, and, and, and so on. But in most cases, we have two calls, the first call and second call. Uh, what are the proce uh, procedures of issue of shares? As I've said, that when the company is registered, so and it being issued with a certificate of incorporation, it will be now allowed to go for the public uh, by issuing a prospectus to invite the general public to subscribe or to apply for the shares. So the procedures now, the first procedure will be the issue of prospectus. We say that when a public company is intends to raise capital, normally they issue these uh, prospectus to the public to invite them to make an offer or to buy its shares. And uh, Normally, this is done through a document called prospectus. The second step is after the prospectus being issued, then the general public will be aware of the prospective companies. Then they send the application. The second procedure will be the receipt of application. So after reading the prospectus, if the public is satisfied, then they can apply to the company for the purchase of shares on a printed prescribed form. Of course, in this form, along with the application money, must be deposited by the applicants on a scheduled bank uh, and get a receipt for the same. So the money will be deposited in the respective uh, bank account. And of course, and the application form will be sent to the company waiting for allotment and that will be the third procedures on allotment of these shares with allotment of shares means the acceptance of the company for the offer by the applicants and this is an offer to take up the shares applied for by issuing a share certificate or letter of allotment so you are going to be given a share certificate when you are especially if you pay the money uh, at lump sum. Of course, all a uh, letter of allotment to tell you that you have been given a certain number of shares that you have applied. And of course, here now, 
the issue of under or over subscription of shares arises. When you apply for the shares, uh, the, the public may either apply more or less. If they apply more, that we call it uh, over subscription. And when the general public applies less shares than that is issued, that will be under subscription. Then, after the allotment, so what next? If the shares are paid on installment, then we expect uh, the company or the management of the limited company to make calls on the shares. Uh, and this is the remaining amount after application and allotment due from the shareholders may be demanded in one or more calls, which termed as either first call, second call, and so on, as I've said before. So normally, the last call is given the word final. So to indicate that this is the last call. These are the procedures on how the company can raise shares. But what, what are the forms of share capital? Of course, this forms part of uh, reporting. As you are reporting in the financial statements, you will find these terms. So, the forms of share capital are as follows. We have authorized or nominal registered shares. What is this? So, this is the amount stated in the memorandum of the associations. Uh, and of course, this is the amount of capital to be issued and also it is the maximum amount that the company can raise. This is the stated uh, capital uh, from which now the limited company is allowed to issue. No more amount can be issued more than that authorized uh, share capital. Then from this authorized share capital, so the company can issue either part, not all, 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 the, all the authorized share capital. So the part issued, we call it issued share capital. So this is the part of the authorized share capital, of course, uh, which is issued to the public for subscription, of course, we issue part. So the remaining part of the authorized share capital, because it's not yet issued, we call it an issued share capital. So then after issuing those shares to the public, what do we expect? We expect the general public to subscribe for the shares. So if they apply for the share, they may apply more or less. So I said before, uh, so whatever is subscribed by the general public, so we call it subscribed share capital. This is part of issued share capital, which is subscribed or applied for by the public. And the remaining, if they undersubscribe, of course, it is called unsubscribed share capital. After the subscribed share capital, then what next? So we expect these uh, shareholders to whom they subscribed for these shares to pay for their shares. Then the, the management will make calls upon the remaining amount of money to be uh, paid. Then uh, there will be the term called up share capital. So what is called up share capital? This is the amount of the subscribed share capital uh, which the director or directors have called upon the shareholders to pay for the shares. And in fact, uh, this is uh, this part constitutes of the capital that should be shown in the financial statement. And the remaining, uh, ba uh, the balance on uncalled up, I uh, mean, of the called up share capital, we call it uncalled up share capital. Of course, this should be shown in the financial statement, called up capital. That is from the actual capital that is uh, circulating or working in the company. So then what we expect after calling those uh, shares upon the shareholders to pay for? So 
part may pay on due date and part may fail to pay on due date. But that part of uh, called up capital, uh, called up share capital, then when they are paid for, we call it paid up share capital. This represents the amount of money received against the calls made on the shares. And any unpaid balance, as I've said, we call it unpaid share capital or calls in area. This will be part uh, of the calls that is not paid for. But sometimes uh, the shareholders may pay in advance. Once the directors make those calls, some of the shareholders may pay in advance. This forms part of calls in advance. And of course, this is the amount of issued share capital which has been received from the shareholders for and called up share capital. These are the forms of uh, share capital. Let us now see the accounting entries for issued shares. As, uh, we have said that the, uh, the, the, the terms of issue for ordinary shares, preference shares, and uh, debentures are the same. But we, uh, I'm going to just to illustrate uh, accounting entries for the issued shares. And of course, we are going to apply the same procedures in preference share and the debenture too. What are these accounting entries? So the first entry is when we receive money. Once we issue, the, uh, we issue prospectus to the community, so we expect them to apply for the share. As they apply, they send the application letter together with application money. So once we receive the application money, we debit the bank account and we credit application account or share applicant account. What next? So not all may be application may be received. If there will be unsuccessful applicants, so their money are refunded. What if the company decide to refund some of the applicants for unsuccessful applications? So we debit application account and we credit bank account to refund this money. Well, uh, the third entry is on allotment by directors. So once the applicants uh, application have been received, so we expect the directors to allot these shares. When these shares are allotted, so basically we close the application account which were credited again. So we debit the application account and we recognize this uh, application to share capital. We credit share capital. And at the same time, we debit allotment account and credit share capital for allotment money. And the allotment letter will be sent to the applicant to require them to pay for the allotment. But sometimes uh, either this share may be issued uh, we, we, as we, we saw the terms of payment, I mean the term of issue that may be issued at par, at premium, or even at discount. When these shares are issued at a premium, so this premium may be rece received on application or even on allotment. And in later cases, you find that a, a premium is paid either in first or final call. Although, in most cases, discount is treated on the final call. But when share premium is received, uh, amount received or receivable. For share premium amount receivable, we debit application or all allotment account, as I've said, we credit to share premium account. So after allotting these shares, we expect to receive the allotment money. For allotment money received, we debit bank account and we credit allotment account. But after the payment of this allotment money, 
And of course, in this allotment money, they may, they, they, there might be either uh, payment in advance or even allotment in area. So, but you, you are going to do accordingly. But I'm just showing the accounting procedures. What about calls made to directors, by, by directors? For calls made by directors, of course, we debit calls account. We credit share capital to recognize these I mean, share to, uh, shares to the share capital account. So for calls uh, received in advance, we debit bank account and we credit call account. As I've said, even in the allotment, there might be a payment in advance from allotment uh, stage. But uh, uh, this is for call money received. Yes, we debit bank account and we credit calls account. For money received in advance, so for money received in advance, we debit bank account and we credit call in advance account for respective uh, stage. It might be, as I've said, in the allotment also there might be payment in advance. What about calls in area? For calls in area, of course, because we are not going to receive this amount, so we debit calls in area to recognize uh, the asset that uh, you, you, you are expecting to receive, and we credit the call account. So, of course, as I've said, in the financial statement, you are going to show the called up capital. Uh, if the amount received is less than the called up capital, or is more than the called up capital, then you are going to show the uh, calls in advance as uh, an obligation, as liability, and calls in area, we are going to show it as uh, asset, current asset, ex uh, we expect to receive. Then, this marks the end of um, the accounting entries for this part. Now, let us see an illustrative question. The question reads, Matwebe Limited offered 10,000 ordinary shares of TZS one each. That is for the public subscription at a premium of 20% as falls. TZS 0.4 on application. TZS 0.4 on allotment including premium. That is the 20% the of premium and the balance on first call. So we are going to compute the difference, including the premium, and that will be uh, the balance that will be called on the, pre, uh, on the final call. That is the first call. So application were received for 20,000 shares. So we issued 10,000 ordinary shares. But the share price are 20,000 shares. That means there were over subscription of 10,000 ordinary shares. So applications for 7,500 shares were rejected. And the application money received against these shares were refunded. So we are going also to do adjustment for the refund. So the rest of the applica uh, applicants were allotted four shares for every five shares applied for. And the excess uh, applications money received was transferred to allotment account. Of course, we are going to adjust it. It will be, I think, 2,500 for these 2,200 uh, excess shares um, amount received on application will be transferred to allotment. So they are going to reduce the amount payable under allotment stage. So we are told that the allotment money we are duly received, but one shareholders, one shareholder who held 500 shares failed to pay the amount due on the first call. So the application money uh, we are received, of course, and the allotment money we are received too, but. There were one uh, shareholder who hold 500 shares 
to fail to pay the first call. So from the information that we are, we are told that use the information provided to prepare journal entries to record the transactions, ledger accounts, and an extract of balance sheet. So we are going to show the journal entries for this transaction, and also we are going to show ledger accounts. And finally, an extract of balance sheet. Before I draw up the journal entry, let me show some workings, important workings, that will guide us in preparing these journal entries. You are watching Darasa Online. Okay, let's start with the working number one on application stage. With the application stage, of course, we offered 10,000 ordinary shares of one each, but the share applied uh, were 20,000 shares. And in fact, on, a, uh, on the first call, I mean, on the application, it was supposed to be 0 0.4 shillings. So then we start with the amount received. Amount received were on 20,000 shares times 0 0.4. Okay, we get almost 8,000. Yes, 8,000. That will be TZS. Okay, so the amount refunded. The amount refunded, uh, it was for 7,500 shares uh, that were rejected. So we reject. Amount refunded, it was 7,500 shares times 0 0.2. For how much this uh, will be 7,500 times 0 0.4? Yes, 3,000. Okay. Transfer to ordinary share. Uh, it will be for the share issued. Uh, times 0 0.4. Okay, that will be, yes, of course, it will be 4,000, yes. Okay, the excess amount should be transferred to allotment. Allotment stage, and of course, if you deduct, you'll get 2,500 shares times 0 0.4, of which this will be 1,000. Okay, we are through with application. Let us go to uh, allotment stage. So with the allotment, we have the amount, amount from application. Amount from application, it was for excess shares uh, of two... 1,500, which was 1,000, yes, 1,000 shillings, okay, to ordinary share capital, okay, so remember these shares were issued at uh, including premium of 20%, so the premium of 20%, it will be on TZS1, so if you multiply by 20%, you get 0 0.2. So the premium was 0 0.2. So if you're deducting from 0 0.4, you get ordinary share capital, it will be 10,000 shares times 0 0.2, of which it will be, okay, 2,000. And then uh, to share... Premium, of course, it will be 10,000 shares times 
0 0.2, uh, which of course it will be also 2,000. Okay? So what will it be now the amount received? Okay, amount received. So will it be the total amount required on, on the allotment stage less the amount received in advance in the application stage. So it will be uh, the 10,000 shares times E4 less 1,000. That will be 3,000. That, that is the amount received on allotment. So we are given information that um, so the rest of the applicants were allotted, yes, that was the pro rata, and the excess application money was transferred to allotment money, yes. All, allotment money were duly received, as we have shown here. But one shareholder who held 500 shares failed to pay the amount due on the first call. So uh, let us now call for the first and final call. For the first and final call, we start by recognizing the amount to ordinary share capital. It will be for 10,000 shares times, okay? So that will be the balance now. So on application, it was 0 0.4. On allotment, 0 0.4, including premium. Then in the last call, again, it should be 0 0.4 to make 1.2. Okay, so it will be 0 0.4. If you multiply it there, you get 4,000. Yes. Uh, then there are calls in a layer. And at this stage, so calls in a layer was 500 shares times 0 0.4 of which cause in a layer will be 200. So what will be now the amount received? So amount received will be, uh, so the 4,000 required less amount in a layer. Of course, it will be 3,080. Hundred. So this is, th th these are the workings that you are supposed to do. Let us now open quickly the journal entry. Okay, this is that column, details column, this is debit with the amount in TZD, S, this is credit, amount should be in TZD, S, okay, right here, journal, entries. Okay, so we start with the first entry. And that, and that, of course, it was on application stage. So the date was not shown. We start by recognizing the amount received. We debit. I assume we received it in cash. That was 8,000. 
So we create it to application. Eight thousand. Remember to write the narration. Okay. Then we got to allotment to allot these shares. So we start by closing this application account by debiting the application by 8,000. Of course, recognizing to ordinary share capital account the 4,000, yes. Okay, then it, the, the other amount we are rejected to bank account, well, how much we are rejected, 3,000. So the balance should be transferred to, yes, a lot, allotment. Well, that is 1,000. Okay. That was the end of the application stage. Let's go to allotment stage. With the allotment stage, we start by recognizing the amount to be transferred to ordinary share capital. Okay, so right here, allotment account, of course. The amount required on allotment is supposed to be the 4,000, okay? Then transfer to ordinary share capital account by 2,000. This amount. Then there are transfer to um to share premium okay to share premium it is supposed to be 2000 okay so you write the narration so how much we are received fact we need to close this account when we receive a debit bank account to recognize the amount received. That was 3,000, if you remember from our workings here. Yes. But, so there were 1,000 amount received in advance. This amount were received in advance from application. It was already transferred to allotment. So, so far, it has already entered in the allotment to make, uh, so in this amount, there is already 1,000 entered from application to allotment. Then, instead of crediting allotment with 4,000, we credit automatically by 3,000. It will now uh, offset the balance, and it will balance. So, we credit allotment by 3,000, because the 1,000 was already received uh, on application stage, okay? This is how you are supposed to do. Okay, so let us go now for a uh, final call, the first and the final call. We start by recognizing the amount to be transferred to ordinary share capital. So we debit first, and the Final call account, and that was 4,000. Okay, so then to uh, ordinary share capital, uh, it will be yes, 4,000. Okay, so 
you write the narration. How much was received? We debit. Bank for the receipt, bank account. So we received only 3,800. So the difference was calls in a layer. We recognize here the calls in arrears account that was 2000 i mean 200 so 200 will be calls in area 3800 was the amount received so we credit to first and final call to close this account first and the final call account by 4000 okay so remember to write it the narration okay so this is the journal entries that you are supposed to show after showing the journal entries because the question required us uh, to prepare journal entries to record the transaction I've shown a ledger accounts and then finally extract of balance sheet so let us now open up the ledger accounts you are watching Darasa online Okay, this is debit, credit. This is bank account. Okay, so we start by entering the amount received right here. Application, it was 8,000. Okay, we open up. application okay so from bank 8000 okay the amount refunded of course transfer to application that was was 3000 so from uh, bank Three thousand. Yes, uh, transfer to ordinary share uh, capital was how much? Uh, it was yes, four thousand. Then the balance should be transferred to allotment is excess, uh, excess money. So, you balance your account here, 8,000. Okay, so you open up now the allotment, that is debit, credit. allotment account so we have the amount from application the 1000 okay this amount then we recognize the amount will be transferred to ordinary share ordinary share capital that will be 2,000, this amount. And then to share premium. Share premium it is 2,000 again. Okay. So uh, what was the amount received under this? So we received by bank, 3,000, if you remember, this amount, and automatically our account balance is 4,000, 4,000. Okay, so we recognize this amount received 
on our achievement. Uh, it is 3,000, yes. Okay. So we transfer these to ordinary share, share capital and these to share premium before we use the other information. Let me clear this part here. First. Uh, even this, yes. Okay, let me open here. Yes, uh, we have debit, credit. Let me open now ordinary share capital account. So, remember to transfer all balances that are required to be shown in this account from application right here. Application account towards how much? 4,000. Yes, allotment. It was 2,000. Yes. Then, let us open now. The share premium. The share premium account, so from allotment, it is 2000. Okay, so you have entered almost the important information. Then we go for final call. So the final call amount called, we are 4,000. And the amount received were 3,800. They were calls in area 200. So we are going to show this work, uh, mini ledger again. Okay, so let me open now. Yes, uh, debit, credit, first, and the final call account. So recognize to ordinary share capital. It is 4,000. So come and write here first, and the Final call, 4,000. Okay? So, what was the amount received? Bank, it was 3,800. Okay, so amount received on first and the final call. It was 3 800. Okay, so the difference was calls in area. That is 200, making a total of 4,000. Here, making a total of 4,000. Okay, let us here now open it quickly. The call in area. So, calls in, calls in a, in area account. Okay, with calls in area, so we debit here by writing first and the final call, that is 200. Okay, so we are through. They should be balanced to transfer uh, to a statement of financial position, then this is balanced. This is also balance. Uh, Kill down two thousand. Okay, 
So this will be, if you add up 10,000, it will be balance, see there, 10,000. Then, these two accounts already balanced, so we compute here the balance again. That will be balance CD. How much will be the balance? We have 8,000 plus 3,000 plus 3,800. Yes, we are 14,800. 14,800 less 3,000. Yes, we have 11,800. Okay. So, we are through. Okay, so, the question required us to show um, the statement or the extract of financial position okay so we are going to use this balance let me take it somewhere here uh, and let me clear this part so that we can show the extract of financial position okay So this is extract of state statement of financial position as at because the date was not shown with the amount in TZS. So we have current asset because we have only one item in the asset side. That is bank. Of course, we have 11,800. Then we go to the part of equity. In the equity, we have ordinary share capital. That was how much the balance was 10,000. Okay, so we less here. Calls in area. Calls in area were two, uh, was 200. If you deduct here, we get 9,800. We have uh, share. Uh, premium, the share premium was 2,000, yes. If you add now, you get 11,800. This is how you are supposed to, to show. Okay, so this marks the end of this uh, session. Of course, keep on asking questions, solve the question that is projected on your screen. So use the number that is displayed to ask questions. You may also use the website, YouTube, to get access of these materials. So the next lesson will be on accounting entries for forfeiture and reissue of shares. Don't miss. Thank you. Mm -hmm.